so we're just gonna get started right now I've already prepped my skin so I've already done all of my skincare let me know if you guys want me to do a separate video on my skincare routine um, but yeah I didn't want to include it because I feel like the video would have been way too long so yeah let's just get right into it so I usually start off with my base first so I'm gonna do that now with the products I use I will list it down below um, just in the description box just because I don't think I'm gonna talk in depth about what products I'm using but yeah I will list it down below for you guys I'm just putting on a little bit of primer now just down my t-zone I've got questions that I asked pretty much last night on my Instagram story but I also have questions that I asked a while ago for a separate video on our other channel at our house and we didn't actually end up answering all of them the ones that I received so um, I've just kind of collected all of them here I had a few questions on what I was studying or if I go to uni so I'll probably answer that first so Pretty much at the moment I am studying psychology and I actually transferred, I was doing a Bachelor of Science at a different university and then decided to transfer just because at that other uni, it was at um, the University of Melbourne, I wasn't really um, enjoying it as much and it was quite a broad bachelor degree so uh, I just wanted to transfer into something more specific and something that I actually enjoyed doing. Just putting another primer on my cheeks. This is just more of a glowy primer. So yeah I will be listing all the products down below for you guys so don't worry. Okay, let's answer another question. What is your height and weight? So my height is 162 centimeters, I think, the last time that I checked. And my weight is, I think the last time I weighed myself was during the first lockdown. So I think I weighed about like, I did lose weight. So I think I dropped down to like 49 kilos, but usually I was like averaging like maybe 51, 52 kilos. So yeah, I did lose a little bit of weight. For foundation, I'm just going to try a different one because I always reach for the same one. So this is the Urban Decay Stay Naked foundation in the shade 51NN. This one's more of like a medium to full coverage foundation and it um, sits really nicely on the skin. On myself, I tend to do base first as opposed to eyes first unless it's like a really uh, heavy like dark smoky eye. But yeah, I haven't had the time to clean my brushes so please don't come for me if like all of my brushes are really dirty I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm just gonna apply that so I think this is a little bit dark for me so I might have to mix a lighter shade let's look at another question so how do you edit your photos so I use quite a few different apps the main ones that I use are Lightroom I think it's called Lightroom CC on your phone that one's like pretty much the main one that I use to do like color correcting or um, putting on like filters and everything so I, I use some um, presets from uh, a blogger named M Davies so she has some really cool presets that you can buy and you would just use it on that app um, on that Lightroom app but some other ones that I also use are Facetune Snapseed is also really good and yeah that's pretty much it for editing and then I use the, the app preview for just setting out my, my feed and seeing if the posts kind of match on my feed but yeah, I'd highly recommend you get Lightroom because that's where I do my main kind of editing. I actually forgot to take out my nose piercing, so I'm just going to take that out now. I always make sure to take out my nose piercing because I hate getting makeup on it. And I'm just going to mix, um, mix Stromboli Natural Radiant Longwear from NARS. my favorite foundation how did you and Dom meet okay so the story with me and Dom is actually pretty funny and I feel like it's quite normal as well with a lot of 
um, relationships these days. So Dom and I met, we were actually following each other on Instagram beforehand for a little while. I never really thought, you know, much of him or anything, but yeah, we kind of knew each other off Instagram. And then I remember during our first year of uni, so pretty much when we were fresh out of high school, 18 years old, he was at a university orientation and one of my girlfriends happened to be there as well and they ended up meeting at the time my girlfriend actually thought he was really cute so <laughs> which is really funny he asked her if um, she knew me and he asked if he should add me on Facebook and then we started talking through Facebook and then we went to a university ball together so he asked me to a uni ball when pretty much before we had even met properly I think we saw each other for a while and we started dating after that and now it's been it's our six year anniversary coming up um, at the end of July so yeah shout out to um, Lily for kind of hooking us up <laughs> also forgot to mention the look that I'm gonna do today is just my like go-to going out kind of look probably gonna do more glowy skin i like keeping the eyes more matte so i really like that more kind of like 90s look so we're gonna do a matte kind of warm neutral eye and then a brownie nude lip as well and a bit of contour so this person asked how did you get your job at my workplace i don't know if i should say where I work. I'm pretty sure if people have been following me for a while they'll know where I work but I probably won't mention it here because I'm a bit scared of <laughs> like people will find out. She asks, how did you get your job at that place and how do you live such a luxe life? Also love all your content. Thank you so much. So I got the job at my current workplace. I pretty much applied online when they were opening a new store and then they pretty much um, placed me at a store that was more convenient for myself, that was a bit closer to home. And you go through two interview processes. So I think first is a group interview and then the second round is a one-on-one. -on -one. It was quite nerve wracking, but I was quite confident in myself because I, all, I had already been working in the industry for a while at another company. And then the second part, how do you live such a luxe life? Now, I found that this was important to address. I mean, on social media and obviously on Instagram, things aren't always as they seem. So obviously on Instagram, I'm uploading photos where, you know, I've got a full face of makeup. I've, it's been taken in the best lighting. It's been filtered. It's been edited. Um, it's taken maybe like 50 to like 100 shots to get that one shot that's like, uh, perfect so I mean I guess I can say is you you don't really see you know the days where I'm feeling down or the days where I'm like breaking out of my skin or the days where I'm actually like struggling we're always posting you know on our very best days so I don't feel like I don't personally feel that I live a luxe life I actually feel like I it's quite far from that but yeah, I mean, to answer that question, I'd probably say I've worked quite hard ever since I was young, ever since I started working a part-time job. So I've always been able to um, afford for the things that I want in life and been able to provide for myself. And I guess that comes from if you work hard, you know, you'll be able to kind of spoil yourself on the things that you enjoy in life. So for me, I think that would be going out for dinners with friends or um, a purchase here and there. Yeah, it's definitely not a, I wouldn't describe my life as luxe at all. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. I'm just gonna go in with my corrector. So I just apply that with my finger. And sorry if the lighting if it keeps changing because the sun's kind of setting now. I kind of woke up late. I, I ideally wanted to film this earlier in the day, but um, I kind of woke up late and I feel like 
the sun just sets so early now during winter so really sorry about that but I've got my trusty ring light so hopefully hopefully that's enough so that's my concealer guys I'm just going to blend this out and also answer another question. I got a few questions about D1 as well, such as how did you come up with the idea of D1? And are you, I think the other one was, do you own D1? So D1 is pretty much a Friday nightclub that I work for. Obviously not at the moment because we're in lockdown in Melbourne. How did you become part of D1? Okay, so pretty much a friend of mine, shout out to Eric. He was the one who actually approached me um, and he pretty much sold me the idea. He said that there was a new night that they were looking at starting up and it was a brand new venue. I went to a meeting and yeah, we agreed to do it. Um, I really believed in the idea and the venue and the team as well. Do you own D1? So I do not own D1. I'm just one of the organizers. So there's quite a large team of us actually. There's about, I think like, maybe like 20 main like organizers. But yeah, we all do our part. And um, I think that's why the night was so successful because we had such a great team and we all got along so well and we all supported each other so i can't wait until venues can start reopening because i'm i actually really miss um going to d1 and like seeing everyone and seeing the team i'm just gonna hop into cream contouring now while answering another question so this person asks where do you work slash earn money i work for a beauty company and then I also do my own makeup and like freelance. So I'm a freelance makeup artist. And then I was also working at D1 on the weekends as well. Yeah, I'm just blending this out. Next question. Favorite restaurant in Japan? Okay, so we ate at so many amazing places in Japan, but I'd probably say like, my favorite favorite meal oh my gosh was definitely when we were in kyoto also if you haven't watched my kyoto vlog um i'll leave it up in the cards we had a meal in kyoto that was a japanese barbecue sort of style restaurant it was called what's matsusaka beef that was the restaurant and so we had a type of beef that was called matsusaka beef and it was honestly like literally the best beef I've ever tried. Highly, highly rec recommend eating there if you're ever in Japan. Favorite nude lip combo. So that's the next question. Um, you guys will probably see that in this video. So just keep on watching until the end. This one's a really good question. Has there been any changes in your relationship as well as individually between you and Dom at the start and now? I feel like this could be a good question to be saved in like a relationship video. Maybe I could get like Dom on here, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. At the start when Dom and I first started dating, obviously we were very, very young. We were fresh out of high school, um, we were only 18 years old. And he was my very first boyfriend as well. So I'd never been in a relationship prior. So yeah, it's definitely a massive learning curve. We were both so young, so we both didn't really know what we were doing. Um, and obviously there were ups and downs like any other relationship. But yeah, compared to now, I think we're in a really good place. Like obviously we've been together six years, so we really, have grown to like understand each other um like literally understand each other inside and out and we're obviously i mean we're both turning 25 now so we're you know we're quite old now <laughs> well i would say we're old and we've both matured we've pretty much like grown up together so i would say the changes have been definitely maturity levels i mean i feel like we've both learned a lot about ourselves being in the relationship but also as a couple so yeah i hope that answers your question 
Okay, so this person asks, what do you currently study and which career pathway are you planning on? So I've already answered the first part of that question. So I'll answer the second part. In terms of career pathway, I do see myself um, just building on my makeup business, my freelance makeup business. I feel like that's where my passions lie and obviously I'm going to um, continue with YouTube and Instagram as well. But I'm, I think I've really found my passion with YouTube because I love, you know, planning out videos and editing and seeing the final product. I feel like I'm... I've always been like quite a creative person, even during high school. Um, I love doing art and everything. So I think naturally I've always been drawn to the more creative side um, of things. So that's why, you know, I, I found that I love doing makeup and, you know, creating content. That's where my passions lie and that's where it's going to take me career wise. I am obviously still studying as well. So. Um, I'm just planning on finishing that. I don't know if I will pursue a career in psychology, but I pretty much just wanted a degree to make my mom happy. This person asked, your dream country to travel to? So I've actually got a few countries on my bucket list, but I would probably say I've always, always wanted to go to like the Maldives, or it's called Maldives, Maldives and also like Bora Bora. I love, absolutely love like tropical um, countries, tropical weather with like a lot of beaches. So that's always been on my bucket list. I've also been meaning to go to Korea really soon as well. Um, that was like next on my bucket list. It was Korea, Philippines and Hawaii. But obviously we can't go because of the restrictions. Okay, this person asked who inspires you? I would probably say this is going to sound so like cliche, but 100% my biggest inspiration is my mum. She is honestly the strongest woman I've ever met. Like she is so selfless and she has really like been through so much in her life too. She's been through everything and she's done everything for myself and my sister. So I would definitely say that she's my biggest, biggest inspiration. And honestly, if I could be like half the woman that she is, then I'd be super, super happy. This person asked, what setup do you use to take your photos? Uh, your pics are always stunning. Um, thank you so much. So the setup I use is really depending on where I am. So if I'm at home, then I'll definitely be using my ring light. I usually prefer a neutral kind of white background, uh, especially if it is a selfie. Um, but you know, if I'm going out, then I try to find a nice background. Um, I mean, if I'm taking photos at night, then flash is always a must. That's really it. It's just finding good lighting. If it's during the daytime, then it's I find a little bit easier to take a nice photo because you've got that natural sunlight. And that honestly makes the biggest difference. I find that also getting a ring light really helps as well, especially if you're at home. Um, like right now I'm filming with a ring light otherwise I wouldn't be able to film because it'd be so dark someone asked what's your favorite food so I love my Vietnamese food because I am Viet myself um, so I love my Viet food I love BB Hay I love pho I love literally like all Viet food I can pretty much eat but I also really love Korean food Korean food is actually like my biggest weakness i love all the soups and stews i love barbecue i also love japanese foods so i love my sashimi i love my ramen um but yeah they're probably my top three fit jap and also korean okay so i'm just popping on an eye base This is actually a really good question here. So this person asked, what were your experiences growing up Asian in Australia? Did you struggle with identity or culture? 
So I definitely feel like I struggled a little bit, especially during high school and primary school. I remember actually a really funny story is that I would feel embarrassed um, because my mum would obviously pack me lunch every day for pretty much my entire schooling years. I would feel embarrassed sometimes when she would pack, you know, Vietnamese lunches and I would feel so embarrassed that I would just throw out the food that my mum gave me and I would rather not eat or just uh, buy food from the canteen. Which sounds really horrible but that's how ashamed I was of, you know, being Asian in a predominantly like Caucasian uh, school. And yeah, I never really felt like I was, oh, this sounds really bad, but I really never felt like I was as beautiful as the Caucasian girls in my school. Obviously that's changed now. Like as you grow older, you kind of find confidence within yourself. But yeah, that's something that I really struggled with growing up. Someone else asked, uh, when are you getting married to Dom? You guys are goals. <laughs> Thank you, but me and Dom are definitely not goals. With marriage, it's really hard because I remember back then um, when I was a bit younger, I said I wanted to be married by like, you know, 25 and have kids when I was like 27. But I'm literally turning 25 next year and I feel like that's not going to happen anytime soon because I do want to, you know, buy a house and everything first and have my life organized before I get married. So we're going to do another question. Um, this person asked, how do you juggle running a nightclub and your regular life? Originally with D1, I ended up backing out. So I originally had listened to the idea and I wasn't going to be involved in it. With a little bit of persuasion, I changed my mind. And at the start, I really didn't think I was gonna be able to juggle everything. Like I was doing uni, I was working, I had a boyfriend. Obviously it can be tiring um, because it is late nights. I think also because I'm, I'm quite used to having a lot on my plate. Ever since I was younger, like I've always been juggling a whole bunch of things like working, you know, going to tutor, going to Vietnamese school, going to actual school, and then spending time with friends as well. So I think I've, just always been good at balancing everything in my life but yeah it can get a little bit crazy um, especially you know if it's during an important time like exams or something so now I'm just gonna press on a bone kind of color um, eyeshadow so I'm just gonna press that right in the inner corners and in the center just to give the eye a bit of a pop and gives off more of that kind of 90s vibe as well. I've pretty much just popped on the lashes, liner and also I've done some bottom lash mascara and eyeshadow too. These are the lashes that I use. This is a style Istanbul from Hello Lavio. These are my absolute favourite, favourite lashes of all time. Another question is, what do you fear most in life? I would probably say my worst fear in life is my parents probably passing away. That would, I know like it's inevitable and you can't avoid it, but that's the one thing that scares me so much. And whenever I think about it, I just try to push it out of my head because it makes me really like anxious. So the next question I've received is, what are your pet peeves? I don't really think about it that much, but um, if I had to pick something, it would probably be people who are stingy. Those type of people just annoy the hell out of me. This person asked, uh, what's your favorite online stores for everyday clothes? I really like Tiger Mist, Nasty Girl, Pretty Little Thing, ASOS. Honestly, most of the times I shop online is when I have an event and I know I need a new outfit. Otherwise, I really just like re-wear the stuff that I have in my wardrobe. And also if it's like everyday clothes, I really, like I literally just re-wear the same stuff all the time. But yeah, I've heard a really bad 
thing recently about the brand Boohoo and how they were underpaying um, people at their factory or something and I think under Boohoo are like a few other brands which are Nasty Girl and a few others I couldn't remember but and I think Pretty Little Thing as well I think I'm I need to find some other places to shop that don't that don't you know abuse their workers what are your favorite restaurants in melbourne i feel like i always go to eat at the same spots all the time in melbourne i do love my italian food i love my steaks some good italian you could go to like scopri or you could do tipo cafe e cucina so that's a really good italian place as well otherwise i just love like my korean barbecue places so bonga manse i really love nobu um, for steak, rock pool's really nice. I'm like so basic with food. Like I, if I like something, I'll always go to that same place and I'll never change. But um, yeah, if you guys have any recommendations, uh, feel free to drop down a comment and I'll give it a sus when isolation is over. Moving on to another question. This person asks, what is your go-to makeup palette? I love my eyeshadow palettes. So I'd probably have to go with like maybe my Colourpop palettes because I can't stop raving about them. Or even my um, Jeffree Star palettes are really nice as well. I can't live without my ambient lighting palette from Hourglass. This person asked, how do you make your cheekbones pop? So I chose to do this at the perfect time. So obviously you make your cheekbones pop with using highlighter. Go for a highlighter that's got a lot of pigment in it but not too glittery so something that gives the skin like a really nice kind of wet sheen. The one I'm using today is from Fenty Beauty. It's called Mean Money and Hustler Baby and just pop it right on the top of the cheekbone here and what you can do to give it an extra pop is you can spray your face first with some um, Fix Plus or like any type of setting spray and then when you put on the highlighter it just glides on and it makes it really intense on the skin the next question is best liquid eyeliner Okay, this is such a good question because I've used so many different liquid liners. I really love the, uh, I think it's the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. That's a really nice one with a really thin tip. It's more of a brush tip as well, so it doesn't dry out as fast. The one I've used today is the Stila Stay All Day, which is also a really nice one. The Mecha Max uh, Wink Ink is also really nice and super affordable as well. There was one that I was using from a Korean brand called Chasunga, and that was honestly like the best that I've ever tried. And it's so sad because Mecha doesn't stock it anymore, so I have no idea where to get it, but I need to get my hands back on it because that one lasted me so long and I could get such a thin like precise wing with it. It's favorite nude lip combo and now is obviously a good time to do that. Morphe Sweet Tea Lip Liner. A really nice kind of brown, brownie nude lip liner. So I like to kind of just overline, especially my bottom lip. And on the top, I kind of just round out the cupid's bow. And I kind of just feather it in around the edges. And then what I do is I grab my Kylie Cosmetics liquid lipstick in the shade Exposed and I just pop a little bit in the center and on top. Blot it with my finger. This is a really nice kind of peachy brownie nude 
lastly, I just pop on an even lighter lipstick. This is Creme de Nude from uh, MAC. So that's the lip done. And then if I want to put a gloss over it, I'll just do the Pat McGrath um, Flesh Astral Lip Gloss. But yeah, because I'm doing more of a 90s look today, I'm just going to leave it like this. Leave it nice and matte. I'm pretty sure that's all of the questions for today. I've pretty much answered all of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around my lips with a little bit of concealer and then blow dry my hair and then I'll um, come back with the finished look. final look i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so so much for asking me those questions on instagram i hope um, after this video you've gotten to know me a little bit better let me know in the comments below what type of videos you'd like to see from me it can be literally anything makeup um, vlogs literally anything give me your suggestions and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and also follow me on instagram i'll pop up the links um, down below i hope you're all staying safe I'm looking after your loved ones, especially my fellow Victorians in Australia. I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!